She's a bit of a naughty word. Hello, lovely friends. How are you doing today? Great. Me too, thanks very much for asking. I've been doing a lot of binge TV watching whilst stuck at home, either during lockdown or we currently are in the middle of phase three of a winter storm. So I haven't left the house in a while. So I've been binging a lot of British television. Now I've already seen a lot of British television, but one of the things my lovelies love to talk about in the comments is British television. So I'm gonna scroll through Netflix and see what we've got by way of British TV. Here we go. Got it on my iPad here. My watch list, The Last Kingdom. Love that series. I don't know if I'm finished with the latest season or series as you Brits call it. Broadchurch, anything David Tennant and I'll watch it. Anything Olivia Coleman, and I'll watch it. It was a really good show. Great British baking show. I watched all the old episodes and all the new episodes. I love baking show. I do prefer Mary Berry to Prue. I love Noel Fielding, so I can't really compare him to Sue and Mel. Sue and Mel were great. Noel Fielding is always great. I can't compare. Marcella, it was okay. It's kind of weird, but it was okay. Criminal United Kingdom is fantastic, particularly Kit Harrington's episode because his monologue is delivered in an entire single take and he's fantastic. Collateral, I watched at some point. I don't exactly recall it being being a super compelling story, but I'm sure it's British drama, it was fine. Sherlock, love Sherlock. Ripper Street, oh man, it had some of my favorite people in it. Braun from Game of Thrones. Dr. Foster, I like Dr. Foster. However, the actress that's in Killing Eve is also in Dr. Foster and she's a bit of a naughty word. So I haven't watched Killing Eve particularly because I didn't like her character in Dr. Foster. I know that's not a good reason, but it is what it is. Last Tango in Halifax is like the cutest show ever. It's got some of my favorite British actors and actresses in it. This is the first time that I saw Nicola Walker in anything, and I've loved everything she's been in since. It's also the first time I saw Sarah Lancashire in anything, Anne Reed, Derek Jacoby. I'll watch all four of those in anything. The IT Crowd, how can you not love the IT Crowd? Moss is absolutely my favorite. Peaky Blinders. I don't think I've seen the latest series of Peaky Blinders, but I really love Tom Hardy's character on that show. Baking Show The Beginnings, which is really just a way for Netflix to say, uh, we aired all of these out of order, so here's some old ones you might not have seen. James A. Caster Repertoire. James A. Caster is one of the funniest British comedians. I love his deadpan delivery. Repertoire was an incredible show. Bodyguard. Bodyguard was okay. I mean, it had Rob Stark. I didn't love the direction the story went. I did not want it to be a romance. Spoiler alert. Great British Castles. This is what I watch when I'm trying to sleep. I just turn on some Great British Castles. While I'm awake, I learn some things. And then learning about castles gently lulls me into sleep. Baking Show Masterclass. This I love. My daughter loves this. She says, Mom, can we watch Paul and Mary bake something? This is before Mary criticized Paul over his affair and they had a bit of a falling out. Mary Berry took Paul Hollywood's wife's side and that was that. People just do nothing. This is one of the first shows that John and I streamed together over Netflix Party. And even before we found Netflix Party, we would just sync up our Netflix and like turn the volume down and watch it together over FaceTime. It was really sweet. Hilarious show. This is the first show that I ever saw with Asim Chowdhury, who is hilarious as Chibuddy G. Call the Midwife, I watched probably up until season five. It's after Jenny left and the redhead came and I don't remember anything after that. Baking Show Holidays. Oh, we still need to watch this one. We need to watch the one with the cast from Dairy Girls. They may not show up all as being watched on here because some of them we stream together on John's. White Gold reunites Simon and Jay from The Inbetweeners. James Buckley, Joe Thomas, absolutely hilarious. It kind of makes me think like, what if Simon and Jay grew up and then went into the same industry. This is sort of how it would be. The Jay character is still somewhat insecure and engages in a lot of puffery and makes people think that he's better than he really is, like Jay and the Inbetweeners. And Simon's just sort of like, he's sort of the sensible one. Jack Whitehall travels with my father. Not a huge fan of Jack Whitehall's stand up, but 
I do love this show. I love watching him interact with his dad. John and I really need to get back into watching this show because we haven't watched it in a while. Extras I watched forever ago on HBO. I find Ricky Gervais really entertaining and I find Ashley Jensen really entertaining. I don't love her in Agatha Raisin because I don't love Agatha Raisin, but I think as a foil for Ricky Gervais, she's hilarious. W1A is so underrated. If you've never seen it, it's about the British Broadcasting House and working at BBC. And it's got Hugh Bonneville. It's technically sort of a sequel series, somewhat loosely a sequel to 2012 in which Hugh Bonneville has to organize the Olympics. It's just really goofy and fun and it has some really great people in it. Vexed I love Vex, another really underrated show. Not a lot of Americans have heard of it. I did prefer the assistant detective in the first series versus the second series. I wish it had had more than two series because I thought Toby Stevens was really good. Flowers. Flowers is quirky in sort of a Wes Anderson sort of way. It's got Olivia Coleman, which is reason enough to watch it, but it's very deadpan, but also it's a little dark, a little quirky. Again, like a Wes Anderson show. The Windsors. <sighs> I'm a bit iffy on the Windsors, so I really like the Prince Charles character. And I really like the Prince William character because I like that actor from W1A. Harry Enfield's always funny. I don't love the Pippa character and her relationship with Harry. It's weird. Yeah, I found it hard to get past the first series. Harlan Coben's safe. This is a question, and this is probably the most important question that I have for Brits regarding British television and media. I say media because Harlan Coben is an author, an American author, from New York. Most of his books are set in the Northeast. The only book of his I've read that had any sort of anything to do with the UK is his recent book Home, which is a Myron Bolitar and Wynn Lockwood story. I mean, this isn't really a spoiler because like the first chapter is set in the UK. He's tracking down a boy in London. I mean, Harlan Coben can write a good suspenseful thriller mystery type book. However, I didn't love the way that he wrote. The dialogue wasn't British enough. I mean, you could tell that he's not a native speaker of the Queen's English. This is my question. Why do Brits love Harlan Coben so much? So I was reading a book by CJ Tudor. She references Harlan Coben. Other British authors I've read, like Ruth Ware, I believe she mentions someone reading a Harlan Coben novel in her book. Why are Brits obsessed with Harlan Coben? Please let me know because I haven't figured it out. Like I said, he's a fine author. Every now and then it gets a bit author intrusive with his descriptions, takes you out of the story a little bit. I don't enjoy the repetitiveness in the Myron Bolitar series because I feel like as a reader of the series, I don't need to know every single book exactly what every character's backstory is because I know it all already. I mean, I get sometimes why people do that. I feel like Stephen King is a bit more artful when it comes to that, but here's the thing about Harlan Coben. Harlan Coben has three series on Netflix. Safe, which is, I believe, original and not based on one of his novels. The Five and The Stranger. The Stranger is based on one of his novels. They picked it up, moved it from New York to the UK, and set it down and told the same story. It's a good show. It has Jennifer Saunders. Even if it weren't a good show, she elevates it. I just started watching The Five, so I haven't finished it yet. Can't comment overall, but so far the story is compelling and good. My problem with Safe is the casting of Michael C. Hall. Michael C. Hall is not a Brit. You have a British story set in the UK, filmed in the UK. You fly Michael C. Hall over to the UK and ignore every single other talented British actor to have Michael C. Hall put on a fake English accent of no description. Where is he from? I don't know. I can't tell. It's a good story, but it's a bit distracting. The fact that Michael C. Hall is the main protagonist, it's just a bit distracting. And I think, oh, let's get the dude from Dexter and, and that'll indicate this is like a serious murdery thing. Maybe that's what they thought. I don't know. We'll talk about some more of these when I've calmed down a bit because the Harlan Coben British connection really irks me. Like I said, not that he's not a good storyteller, but why? What is it about Harlan Coben? Is he an Anglophile? If so, why does he write books in, about New York City? Why do the Brits take his stories about New York City and, and set them in the UK? Please answer this for me in the comments. 
I'd love to look through more of my Netflix with you. If you have any suggestions on what I should watch, let me know in the section below. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a little like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next time. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. But why? But why? But why?